Hello and welcome to Bay College's Online Lectures for College Algebra. I'm Jim Helmer and in this section 6.4 we're going to talk about logarithmic functions. Now before we actually begin I just want to uh, review a simple concept of mathematics. When it comes to any operation we have an equal and opposite inverse operation. As an example if you have addition its inverse operation is subtraction. One operation can undo the other. When we have multiplication, its inverse would be division. Again, one operation can undo the other. Now in the previous section, 6.3, we talked about exponential functions. Well here, we're going to introduce logarithmic functions. Logarithms are the inverse operation of exponents. So let's recall an exponential function. f of x equals a to the x. Essentially, it's called an exponential function because our variable lies within the exponent. Now, one thing we have to recall is that our base has to be greater than 0. We can't have a negative value of base. Otherwise, that's not going to uh, be a one-to-one -one function, which we'll discuss shortly. And a cannot equal 0 because any, or 1 to any power doesn't change. And our definition of an exponential function is constant uh, growth or constant decay. Well, if we want to find the inverse of this function, its inverse operation, so to speak, from an exponential to a logarithmic, well, we've explored finding the inverse. Essentially, we replace our y value with an x and our x value with a y. <clears throat> now, if we translate this to English language instead of an algebraic expression, this asks, to what power do I raise a to get x? Now, to put this into a mathematical terms, this is where we introduce the concept of logarithms. We need an operation that can undo something from the exponent. Because in order to write this in function notation, we need to be able to solve this for y. Well, how do I get this y out of the exponent? And that's where we introduce a logarithm. Log of the same base, a, of our argument x will give us the y value, and our f of x equals y. Well, this is our intermediate step, so to speak. Now, let's take a look at this. If we have x equals a to the y, we can rewrite it as y equals log base a of, the, of x. To what power do I raise a to get x? So now I can have an input to get an output. Logarithms tell me what the powers are. They undo exponents. They tell us what the exponent is. Now, <coughs> excuse me, if we look at this, this is our exponential function, f of x equals a to the x, and we have our reference point, which we discussed in the previous section, 0, 1, because anything to the 0 power is 1. Well, our inverse, and if we recall, an inverse is the reflection through the identity line, y equals x, we can see that it is a reflection. Anything that's above y equals x is reflected to below. And because we have the understanding of inverses, we replaced x with y to solve for this. Well, if we look at our point, we also have a reference point of 1, 0. The concept there is since anything to the 0 power is 1, the log of 1 is always 0. Because anything to the 0 power is 1. Now, let's think about this for a moment and say, well, if this is our new function, our inverse operation of exponents, y equals log base a of x, x must be greater than 0. That's essentially discussing our domain, where a, our base, just like it was in an exponential value, must be greater than 0. It has to be positive and not equal to 0, and a not equal to 1. It still follows the same parameters, the same rules apply. Now, if we look at our domain of our exponential function, well, I could put in any power to, of the base. So my domain is all real values from negative infinity to positive infinity. And the range of my exponential function, well, if we recall, the horizontal asymptote is y equals 0. This never goes below the x-axis, nor does it cross it. So what that means is this is always positive. And if we think about it, there is no value of an exponent that's going to change the sign of the base if the base is positive. So our range is from 0, not including 0, to infinity. 
And if we recall some of the properties of finding the inverse, well, if we replace x with y and y with x, we replace all the properties that go with that. Well, the domain of a logarithmic function, if we look at the graph, we see this is my vertical asymptote, and there is no value of x less than or equal to 0. So my domain is from 0 to infinity, not including 0. And you notice the range of the inverse is the domain of the inverse function. So we can see that. And if we look at our range of our inverse function, our logarithmic function, it goes down to negative infinity. And this arrow would continue up to positive infinity. So it is all real numbers. And we can see our domain is switched to our range. And our range switched to our domain. They are inverse functions. Let's explore this a little bit further with decreasing functions, or decreasing exponential and logarithmic functions. What we just saw in that previous example was increasing. Well, <coughs> to be a decreasing exponential function, our a, our base, is between 0 and 1. It's essentially a decimal or a fraction. So we have f of x equals 1 half to the x. Well, the first thing we want to do is identify the base. If I'm going to find the inverse, instead of replacing x with y, we are going to do that but we have to introduce that inverse operation of an exponent, which is a logarithm. So I'm going to introduce a log, and I identified a base to be 1 half. So my base is 1 half, and the argument is now x, because this is my y value. y equals log base 1 half of x. Now our domain of this, well, it hasn't changed. It's just decreasing, and that's the one in blue here. It's decreasing. So its domain is any value I can put in. And its range, it never crosses the x-axis. It's always a value that's positive. There are no transforms that are going to change that as of in this example. So my range excuse me, is from 0 to infinity. Now, if we look at the inverse in red here, we see it's a decreasing function, just like the exponent was decreasing. Now the logarithm is also decreasing. Our reference points from 0, 1 to 1, 0. Our domain is the range of the exponential function. And if we look at the graph, there are no values less than or equal to 0. My vertical asymptote is the y-axis. And the range is all real numbers. We can see this arrow goes up to positive infinity, and this one goes down to negative infinity. Now, <coughs> This is just a, an overview of <coughs> the, the behaviors of our exponential or logarithmic functions. One thing we have to keep in mind is an increasing logarithmic function with a base greater than 1. Okay, We see that's increasing, just as it was in an exponential function. The base greater than 1, it was an increasing exponential function. With logarithms, it's a decreasing logarithmic function if our base is somewhere between 0 and 1, a decimal or a fraction, and we can see it's decreasing. But the reference point doesn't change. Just like in an exponential function, if it's decreasing or increasing, anything to the 0 power, regardless of what it is, is equal to 1. All right, so let's move on to applying this inverse operation. Now, here we have some exponential equations that we explored in the previous section. Now, if we think about this, this is a true statement. It says 8 to the negative second is 1 64th. Well, I want to undo this. I want to figure out how this relates using a logarithm, the inverse operation. Well, 8 to the negative second, well, a negative exponent, hopefully we remember our rules of exponents, tells me that this is a reciprocal, 1 over 8 squared. And 8 squared is 64. So 8 to the negative second is, in fact, 1 64th. That's a true statement. Well, first, let's identify the base. Well, what's being raised to a power is 8. So I'm going to write this as log base 8 of the argument 1 64th equals negative 2, the power. Logarithms tell me what the power is. They undo the exponent. So they are equal to the exponential value. Now, essentially, if we translate this, it says 8 raised to the negative second is 1 64th. They say the same thing. Log base 8 of 1 64th is negative 2. 
If we look at this, hopefully we re <coughs> excuse me, recall this here. This is an E, which is just a natural number, an irrational number represented by this value here, E. Well, my log is base E. We identify the base of the argument 82 equals T. Now, this is actually something we could plug into the calculator, which we'll explore more shortly. So this, by writing this in a logarithmic form, is something I can now solve for that exponential variable. Let's look at this one. Let's do the same thing, but on the other end. We have a logarithm. Sometimes to solve logarithms, we want to rewrite them as an exponential equation. Well, just like we did here, the first thing we want to do is identify the base. Well, the base is a. The power is 5, and it's equal to the argument. So we can rewrite logarithms to exponents and exponents to logarithms and vice versa. Whatever is going to make it easiest to solve for whatever we're looking for. Now, if we look at this, this is a property that we've discussed, and we'll dive into it in a moment. If we want to write this as an exponential equation, my base I identify as 5. My power is 0. And that's equal to 1. And if we think about it, this is a true statement. 5 to the 0 power equals 1, because anything to the 0 power is 1, which means in turn, the log, regardless of the base of 1, is always equal to 0. So let's look at that property here. It says log base a of 1 equals 0. It doesn't matter what the base is, because a to the 0 power equals 1. Anything to the 0 power equals 1. So this is a property of logarithms that we can use. It's essentially the same as our exponents. Now if we look at this, well, <coughs> log base a of a equals 1, regardless of what a is, because anything to the first power is itself. And that's, if we rewrite this as an exponential equation, that's what we get. a to the first power is just a. So log base a of itself is 1. Here is a concept that we're actually going to use to solve equations. If these bases are the same, just like it was here, it's equal to the power. Log base a of a to the y power, <clears throat> if we think about what is a logarithm asking me, a to what power is a to the y? Well, in this case, a to the y equals a to the y. And that's what this says if we rewrite it. Um, so let's take a look at this. This is the concept that we're actually going to use. If we can write our values to have the same base, essentially they're going to reduce to what the power is, because logarithms tell us powers. So if I look at this, 16 is the same thing as 2 to the fourth. So if we reread this, it says log base 2 of 2 to the fourth. Well, to what power do I raise 2 to get 2 to the fourth? It tells me the power. And I already know it after rewriting it to have the same base, log base 2 of 16 is 4. Let's look at this one here. Hopefully we recall some of our rules of exponents. If we have a reciprocal, 1 over a value, we can rewrite it as that value to a negative power. Well, 1 third I can rewrite as 3 to the negative first. Using the same property as we did here, 3 to what power is 3 to the negative first? Well, 3 to the negative first is 3 to the negative first. It is what it is. And lastly, if we look at this one here, we can see, OK, log base 5 to what power is 25? Well, 25 is 5 squared, so 5 to the second power is 25. And this one here, <coughs> 2 to what power is 1? Well, if we go back to this right here, the log, regardless of the base of 1, is always 0 because anything with 0 power is 1. So whenever you see the log of 1, recognize that it will be 0. 2 to the 0 power is 1. That is a true statement. All right, let's uh, take a look at some uh, logs that we're going to come across on a regular basis, whether it uh, be in our other classes, maybe chemistry, physics, biology, economics even. The first thing we're going to look at is the common log. This is base 10. And the reason why it's called the common log is because our number system is a base 10 number system. If we move the decimal to the right or to the left, we're changing it by factors of 10, our base. So 
what we have to recognize is a little bit of notation. If I have log base 10 of x essentially being a common log, I can just write it as log of x. When we do not see the base written, we assume a common log, a base 10 logarithm. So let's think about our factors of 10 for a moment. If I have log of 1,000, this is asking me, to what power do I raise 10 in order to get 1,000? Well, I know that 10 to the third power is 1,000, so log base 10 of 1,000 is 3, or log of 1,000 is 3. But what happens if I have a value that isn't going to give me a nice integer like we have just seen? Well, back in the old days, engineers and people who had to work with logarithms would carry around a huge book that had a list of different logarithms so that they could figure these out. Well, nowadays we have the tool of a calculator, something we can carry around in our pocket, and it is in a huge textbook with lists of numbers in it. So we can actually plug this into a calculator. And I do want you to be familiar with your calculator. We all may have different types of calculators. It's kind of your responsibility to know how to use your calculator. The log key, it's sometimes LOG, all capital letters. You'll find that key in your calculator or as a key all by itself, or you might have to use a, a shift key to access it or maybe in, your, uh, in the memory of the calculator somewhere. But be familiar with it. Be able to find it. If you just see LOG, you assume base 10. So if I have log of 500, this is something I can just plug into my calculator or refer to my log book. And I'm going to find, well, before I actually write out the answer, because it's not an integer, I know that 500 is more than 100, which is 10 squared. But it's less than 1,000, which is 10 cubed, which we just saw in this example. So I know my number is going to be somewhere between 2 and 3. And if we actually put it into a calculator, we find it's 2.69. 8, 9, 7, and the digits continue. It's an irrational value. But we can see, just to make sure we understand the concept, because we don't always want to just wholeheartedly trust our calculators, because we can all make what I like to call fat-fingered mistakes. You hit the wrong key, and it'll give you the right answer, but sometimes it's a wrong problem. So you want to make sure, is my value estimated between 2 and 3? 2.69897, yes, that's between those values. All right, let's look at this example here. Now, this should be something that we shouldn't need a calculator for. 10 to what power is 10,000? Well, I just count the number of zeros. 10 to the fourth would be 10,000. And I can figure that out. 10 times 10 times 10 times 10 is, in fact, 10,000. If we look at this next example here, we have log 1 equals something. Well, let's think about it. Identify the base. I don't see a base written. I know it's a common log. Base 10. 10 to what power is 1? Well, this follows the rule of x or logarithms that we had just spoken about. Anytime we have the log of 1, it's equal to 0, regardless of the base, because anything to the 0 power is 1. Now, let's explore this for a moment. It says log of 0. Well, 10 to what power is 0? Well, there is no value that will make the base just go away. We won't make it be 0. If we think about our graph of a logarithm, whether it's increasing or decreasing, there are no values of the argument less than or equal to 0. So that it can't equal 0. This, if we plugged it into our calculators, our calculators would say error or domain error or something along those lines, depending on your calculator. So this value does not exist. It's not within our domain. So if this is true, then what does that say about this? Log of negative 4. Well, if we think about our graph of the library function of a logarithm, there are no values of the argument less than or equal to 0. So this, too, is not within our domain, so it does not exist. All right, so that's base 10. It follows all those same rules we just discussed. But now we have this natural log. In the previous video, we introduced the natural number, this value e. Well, it's a common log that we have in population growth or in uh, certain decays, bacteria, things like that, whether it's biology or physics, even economics. Maybe we're talking about interest, which we'll see an example of uh, soon. I think we saw an example in the previous section, actually. But it, here we have log base e of x. Well, log base e is called our natural log, or log naturel, and it's abbreviated ln for log naturel. 
Um, so when we see this, ln, we have to know that the base is that number e, which is 2.71828, just an irrational number, just like pi. We use this symbol e to represent that value. Now, just like with the common logs, we don't need that log book anymore because we have the tool of a calculator. And this whole section should be relatively calculator uh, dependent. We're going to be doing a lot of these. So here I have uh, log, or excuse me, ln of 4, log base e. And that's something I'd plug into my calculator and find it to be 1.38629 something, something, something. And we got to round it at some point. So this is an exact value. This is a rounded calculator value. And uh, one thing we want to do is still kind of estimate it. Well, if e is 2.7 something, this is less than squaring that value. That value is almost 3. So if I squared 3, I'd be upwards around 9. Well, if I square 2.7 something, it's going to be more than just 2 squared, which is we know is 4, right? So this value should be less than 2. And if I look at it, sure enough, 1.38 is less than 2. Well, what about ln of 18? Well, again, this is not a nice factor of e, so we'd have to throw this into our calculator. Be familiar with this key. Sometimes it's a key that looks like that, or we have to find it in some function of our calculator. So be able to identify that key and know how to use it. ln of 18, if I plug that in, ln 18, it's going to give me 2.890 something, something, something. So we're just rounding it at some point. Well, what about this? Well, ln of e, if we identify the base, the base is e. This, again, is one of our rules of the logarithms. The base is the same as the argument. So e to what power is e? Well, e to the first power is e. Their bases are the same, so it tells me what the power is. If we look at this, same concept as we had here, log of 1 equals 0. Well, here we have natural log of 1 still equals 0, because anything to the 0 power is 1, regardless of the base. ln of 0, well, let's think about it. Regardless of the base, that is not in our domain. 0 is not within our domain. That's our vertical asymptote, which our graph will never cross. So I know that that's a domain error. It does not exist. 0 is not within our domain. And same thing with negative 4. That is not within our domain. So if we did plug this into our calculator, and feel free to do so, it will tell you domain error. This is not a valid real answer. All right. Let's move on to the last board here. So how can we solve logarithmic equations? In the previous video, or section 6.3, we looked at logarithmic e or exponential equations and how to solve them. We tried to write them as the same base, or maybe we wrote them as uh, a different format. But now if we look at this, well, let's use our rules of exponents and see if we can rewrite the equation in some exponential form. First thing you want to do is identify the base. Well, the base is 5 for this example. And my power is 3, 5 to the third is this argument here, 8 minus 7x. And we can solve this. So I can 5 cubed is 125. I'm going to subtract 8 from both sides. And divide by negative 7 equals x. Now, being that these are logarithms, and I don't believe this to be a nice whole number, maybe some decimal equivalent, I can plug this into my calculator and get the answer. Here it is exact. If I plug it in my calculator, I might have to round it at some point. Let's look at this example here. What's my base? Well, my base is e. And I notice it's e to some power. Well, e, if I rewrite this as an exponent, e to the eighth power equals e to the negative 2x. Now, using our rules uh, that we had in the exponential section, if the bases are the same, then in turn, their powers have to be the same. So 8 equals negative 2x. And now I could just divide both sides by negative 2, and I get negative 4 equals x. And I can always check that. If I plug this in, negative 4 times negative 2 is a positive 8. e to the 8th equals e to the 8th. That is a true statement. Now, let's 
apply transforms, just as we did with exponential equations, to a logarithmic equation. Let's think about this library function. Because of the rules of exponents, I know, or logarithms, I know that the log of 1 is 0. That's my reference point. So if I graph my library function, I know that this is, oh, excuse me, 1, 0. That's my reference point. Because the log of 1 is always 0. Now, if we think about it in the same form we looked at exponentials, this a tells me if it's reflected, is it to this side or is it to this side? Right? It's reflected through my axes. If it's negative, it's decreasing. If it's positive, it's increasing. So that's my a value here. It's 1, so it's going to look similar to this one. The h value is within this grouping symbols. And if we recall, when we dealt with an h in grouping symbols, it was always the opposite of what we saw in there. So here, it tells me the horizontal shift is to the left one, because it says x plus 1. So I'm going to move the whole graph, my reference point, back 1, or to the left 1. So instead of being here at 1, 0, it moves back. To zero, 0, Now it has the same properties, but everything is shifted. Instead of my vertical asymptote being at y here, the y-axis at x equals 0, my vertical axis is shifted to the left 1. So now it's at negative 1. Let me just draw in that vertical axis. The x-intercept, well, we already found that through our reference point of shifting it. It's the origin, 0, 0. The y-intercept, well, now we have a y-intercept. Well, how do we find the y-intercept? Well, if we had to, we'd plug 0 in for x. 0 plus 1 is 1. The log of 1 is 0. And we see that when we move this. This just happened to be 0, 0. Again, it's the origin, that shared point where the x and y cross. What about our domain? Well, let's put in our information. We know it's an increasing function because it's positive, right? It's going to look something like that. It passes through our intercept. In this case, it's the origin. And it decreases. So what's my domain? Well, because of this shift, this horizontal shift, it changed my domain a little bit. It shifted everything to the left. So my domain is from negative 1 to infinity. Now, negative, it doesn't include that value because this is a vertical asymptote. Graphs never cross their vertical asymptotes. And the range, well, the range hasn't changed. The range is still all real numbers, from negative infinity to positive infinity. So now if this did have a value out here, if we were adding or subtracting a value, that would just shift our graph up or down, just like we explored when we talked about transforms in the previous section. Now, let's, uh, let's take a look at this. This is going to be your quiz. I want you to try it for yourself using these properties here. If we have log base 2 of x squared equals 6, rewrite this as an exponential function and go ahead and try and solve it. See if you understand the concept and you can do it yourself. So we have log base 2 of the quantity x squared equals 6. Go ahead and try it. This has been section 6.4, logarithmic functions. Thank you for watching.